deriving expression for the rotational inertia or moment of inertia of a uniform thin rod with mass m and length l about an axis that is perpendicular to the rod and goes through the end of the rod, meaning the rod rotates like this about its end. We already know that the rotational inertia of a point mass is mr squared. However, this rod is not a point mass, so we have to chop it into little pieces of dm, find the rotational inertia di for each piece of dm, and then add them all together. For example, this little piece of dm is a point mass. Therefore, we know its little bit of the rotational inertia di is mass dm times r squared. And this distance between the axis and the point mass is the r. To find the rotational inertia for the entire rod, we just have to integrate this. To integrate means to add. In this case, the r squared is not a constant, because a different dm would have a different r. So we cannot take the r squared out of the integral. And to express this integral in a more familiar format to you, I'm going to write it like this. The integral of r squared dm. This r is a variable. And we have r squared, a function of r here, but dm. In order for us to be able to integrate this, we have to have a function of r and dr. So we need to figure out how to rewrite this dm into something dr. Now the dm is the mass of this little segment. And we want to know what to multiply the dr by to get the mass. This distance here is r. And dr, or delta r, is delta r over here, which is the distance over here. The length of this little bit of dm is the dr. So dr is the length. So what should we multiply the length by to get the mass? This is mass divided by the length, mass per unit length, which is what we call linear density. Linear density is the mass per unit length. When we multiply the mass per unit length by the length, we get the mass in that segment. For a rod with mass m and the length l, what do you think is the linear density? What do you think is the mass per unit length? It is uh, m over l. So if we multiply the linear density by the length of this little segment, we get the mass that's in that little segment. So we just have to replace the dm with uh, that. So the integral r squared and dm is m over l dr. Now we can take the m over l, which is a constant, out of the integral. And we're integrating r squared dr. So r squared is going to turn into r cubed. And what do we have to multiply this by? 1 over 3. Now we do not have to do the plus c over here because this is a definite integral. We are integrating from one end of the rod to another because we have to add the di for every little bit of dm. So we can start from here, this end, and go all the way to the other end. When the dm is at this end, what is the r? r is 0. And then we go to the other end of the rod. That little bit of dm would have a r equals to l. So we integrate all the way to r equals to l. And then, of course, we just have to plug in the upper limit, m over l, one-third l cubed, minus what we get when we plug in the lower limit, which is 0. So if we simplify this, we will get one-third 
mL squared, and that is the rotational inertia for this rod. Now suppose I change the axis to a different location. For example, it now has an axis that is one-third L from its end, right here. What is the new rotational inertia? What changes over here? We would still chop the rod into little bits of dm. And for this piece of dm, it would be distance r to the axis, and the length of this little piece is still dr, which means we can still rewrite the dm. It's the same thing, the linear density times the dr. So this integral is the same here. What changes are these lower and upper limits? We would have to integrate from this end to that end. When it's at this end, the r is one-third l. When it's over there, the r is two-thirds l. So we'll say the i is m over l times one-third r cubed, and the limit would have to be from negative one-third l to positive two-thirds l. Do not write 0 to L because you're going to get a different result. Okay, so over here it's negative one-third L to positive two-thirds L. That means uh, I have to plug in, so this is one-third M over L, and then for the R cubed, I have to first plug in the upper limit, two-thirds L cubed minus negative one-third L cubed. So this will be one-ninth ML squared, and that's the rotational inertia if the axle is right there. Another choice we have is for us to find the rotational inertia of this side of the rod first, and then that side of the rod, and then add them together because the rotational inertia for the entire rod is the rotational inertia of this part plus the rotational inertia of that part, which means I can put in the bounds like this. The lower limit will be 0 all the way to 1 third L, plus the same thing with the limit that goes from 0 to 2 thirds L. And if we plug in the upper limit and then minus what we get for when we plug in the lower limit and do the same here, we will get exactly the same answer, 1 ninth ml squared after we add these two sides together.